the, our intent today is to spend more time showing you demonstrations of the product and how you're paid than anything else. But we have to give some preface up front as to what knowledge capture is about to give a clarity as to the counterfeit application and how that benefits IBM software sales. So first of all, the IBM, not, we brand our product knowledge capture, that's our brand name, which is a com that includes a combination of IBM software from FileNet, Case Manager, Watson, DataCap, and i2, the i2 suite of products. The real differentiation is that we pulled them all together to create an analytics tool that helped the brands, which are the marketing, the manufacturing companies, fight counterfeit. In the industry today, a brand is the Procter & Gamble's, the Unilever's, the Chanel's, so these companies in the counterfeit terms are called brands. So what Integrity created was a cloud service. You pay $150 a user a month and it provides all this capability that you're looking at now, the ability to search the social media capability for products that have been sold through social products uh, or we have an extended module where you can go onto Amazon, eBay, and search for products you're uncomfortable with or a manufacturer is uncomfortable with. We have a cell phone app, seamlessly integrated to IBM case management, that if, you, if a physical product is known to be counterfeit, a customs agent can take a photo or an investigator can take a photo of that counterfeit case and can directly commence a takedown process. And a takedown process is where you will take a legal action against the company or you'll immediately cut off their web pages or their bank accounts and the legal processes in the counterfeit industry that enable that to happen today. So Knowledge Capture is a product that owns identifying counterfeit, capturing the details, managing the workflows of those issues and number four, deep deep analytics to look for trends and hot spots and where things are moving. So we're going to demonstrate all four points of this today, all powered by IBM. Now this slide here it is important to understand how you're paid and we'll talk about the software products later as we go through this. But at number one, we wrote, and this is a differentiator to IBM, hooks directly to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Alibaba, Amazon, eBay, and a range of other products. That means we can leverage our search engine and look in the market for products that we believe could be counterfeit. For example, if Nike is selling a pair of shoes for $200 and they've been sold for $45, our leveraging the Watson product, for example, we are able to start highlighting that we believe you should check the pricing of this and why they've been sold so low. And it could be a whole range of reasons that one of those has been counterfeit. And if we find the product's counterfeit, our product will suck that out and put it into the data hub in the, in the middle, which is FileNet, also powered by Watson, and then once we identify it as a counterfeit product, we'll automatically create a case at number four in the IBM case manager product. And it'll control and own the complete process from identify the case, create a counterfeit um, incident, and then the whole way through to having that company taken down. More importantly, at number five, a takedown process is where certain forms can be completed and sent to eBay that make them immediately delete and remove the products from their sites or Amazon uh, or Facebook or other products. So the takedown process number five is a workflow system that we've built. Now that's the important part because takedown and anti-counterfeit, it could be a bank account. Literally, there's a place that we can go to with a workflow. You send your details to this place called the ICC. They'll sign off a letter and immediately those bank accounts are frozen. Immediately the websites are removed um, globally which gives control back to the brand. Number, number six, on the diagram here at the top, what we're, looking, what we're able to do is use I2 to start connecting the dots between the buyers, the sellers, the distribution, the delivery, the manufacturer, and looking for those connections of organized crime. The real value there is no one really cares in the anti-counterfeit industry, in the counterfeit industry, who bought the product, even so it's unethical. The real issue we hear is who delivered the product and who manufactured it. Because if you can cut the 
head off the snake at the top of the process, it doesn't go downhill. So leverage in I2, we are able to take a look at this person's connected to that person, to that company, they're located jointly here in this city, in that same company, and lock down, it's, it's specific that this person here and this company are manufacturing products. So leveraging I2 with Watson, with case management, is very differentiated. So we wrote seamless APIs between 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6. The real power to the industry is by companies, there's a whole range of specialist um, anti-counterfeit organizations on the left there, names that won't mean a lot to you, but these are people that all day long is anti-counterfeit takedown. At the top, you've got over 6,000 major corporations that are losing over $1 trillion a year from counterfeit products in the areas of manufacture of shoes, in the area of, of pharmaceuticals, in the area of perfumes, jewelry, um, consumer goods, so it could be powders, it could be shavers uh, at the top. And on the side here and at the bottom, the ability for the police and the government agencies, government agencies such as um, customs, having the ability to influence and control and capture and take down these companies. So what we've done as an organization is work with many of the leading brands and many of the leading intelligence players and, and law and government agencies connect them together into our cloud called Knowledge Capture, which has enabled over time for us to get a bigger picture of organized crime. And there's a major benefit to the companies where you can do a query now and you like-minded things are seen, such as a cell phone number has been used on Amazon and Facebook and in a spam email where I2 picks up the connections between the three, saying this one cell phone number is connected to Harry, who's connected to that company, and then it can commence and automate the speed of takedown in the manufacturing and retail industry. So we're now going to show you demos, a whole range of demos, back to back to back, on why we're differentiating the ability to capture and control what is a counterfeit product. Now the important thing here, is it's not just about saving money. The ROIs are relevant to most of the companies. Let's, let's use examples here. If you are talking on Gamble, you're going to be concerned, for example, that you may be losing revenue because a Gillette shaver is, is um, being manufactured. But if you are a pharmaceutical company like Glaxo and you're selling cancer drugs or high blood pressure drugs and then you've got counterfeit products, people could die. So the pharmaceutical industry is more concerned about death. Or if you're in the toy industry and you're selling toys for underage, under three-year-olds, these kids are going to put toys in their mouth, choke and die. So depending on the industry you're in, the ROI is quite different. Net result is it human safety, is it money saving, is it um, protection of assets, they're all very different. So when we start now, the biggest issue in the market, which is what we've targeted, is these over 400 thousand different fake products added on websites every day globally. And it's like a whack a mole You take one down and another 399 will pop up tomorrow. So you need to have high scalable products that can have open robots to go out to Amazon and the eBay and the other products to automatically look. And this is where Watson from IBM integrated with Case Manager and I2 play a big part to investigate and control that. So we're going to show you an example of a demo now explicitly where we can log on, for example, look at a shoe, it could be Nike, it could be Adidas, other organizations and look at their products and see if they're counterfeit and then how we'd capture that and put it into case. Thank you very much, Michael. So within uh, our online module, what we're able to do is run search queries across various marketplaces online, so whether it be Amazon, Taobao, eBay, for example, and we're able to bring back the listings in a near real-time basis into a central consolidated platform. So no, long, no longer do we have to go across all of these sites individually. We can simply hook into this one platform, view all of our listings, and then automate the takedown process. So at the top, we're able to look at these different marketplaces, and we can filter down these results as well that we're looking at. And what this will enable us to do is basically focus in on the content we're most interested in. So this goes across languages and can show all kinds of different information. 
And what brands and organizations are looking to leverage is things such as the price. They might have whitelists that can be loaded into the platform, and that will exclude those sellers, so authorized sellers being excluded from, from this particular list. Once we've got the information back in here, we'll pick up information around location, quantity, price. And from that, we're then able to send these notices back to organizations, back to the actual websites and marketplaces, in order to actually take down these goods. So we've hooked into things like eBay, we've understood their process to take down, and we can then add that into the system so that when users are trying to take down these things, it happens automatically, as opposed to a manual process that currently happens. The real value here is we've integrated eBay, Amazon, uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn directly to Watson and directly to IBM Case Manager. That's the real power of and the differentiation of integrity and IBM in partnership. We've written the hooks, the APIs, the total solution that enables IBM integrity to go as a service solution out of the box to our customers. So that's very much the online side, and we'll come back to that a bit later on when we hook into uh, I2. But what we're also able to do um, within the counterfeit capture process is understand when physical goods have been uh, captured at source or seized from a raid or a takedown. So what we've been able to develop is a mobile application that enables users in the field to actually capture and identify when goods are counterfeited. So this mobile application features the ability to do a scan and this will do a lookup against the product you have in front of you. So using an inbuilt camera, it will look at the product itself, and when you find a unique identifier, such as a barcode or serial number, it will do a lookup against the knowledge capture system to find any documents or data that's in that hub. Documents can be fully encrypted, so only people have access, uh, that should have access, get access to that content. And within this system, what we can have is technical drawings, diagrams, and additional information to help the users within the field identify when something is counterfeited or not. The next step of this, though, is being able to also trigger a case within IBM Case Manager and trigger that investigation process. So by hitting the report button, what we're able to do is start to create a case from within this mobile app. We can add images to the actual case itself, so we can add, start adding evidence, and we can then define the case type. So it might be counterfeit, it might be gray market, and we can start to index that from even while I'm in the field. I can define regions, and then I can add some content and some uh, notes to the actual reports. And what this will enable my colleagues to do, say back at head office, is kick off the investigation process, and this is completely seamless. So it doesn't matter whether I'm in the field, in all countries across the world, I can simply launch that process, and then we can go and investigate that from case management. The key differentiator to IBM again is that we've seamlessly integrated cell phone apps into Watson, into i2, and into IBM Case Manager, that if you're a customs agent in any country, you can use our app, take a photograph, identify if the product is red or counterfeit, and if it is counterfeit, immediately start the case. Our customers today are hiring investigators, well, historically, hiring investigators, they have a manual book and register, they will go to stores such as Walmart, Sainsbury's, Toys R Us, whatever the store may be, they'll go to that shop, they'll manually check against their online register book if a product is correct or it's counterfeit. They then have to fill out forms manually. This is, this is at a consumer level, at a retail level, at a government level, fill out these forms, and then they've got to send them off to the agency that can process a counterfeit takedown. That process can take weeks to do, because if you're a government agent, you could be doing a 100 of these in a day. If you're an investigative firm, you could be doing you know, 20 different takedowns or, or focus points, which could take you weeks before the paperwork gets up to the actual point of resolution. The value that we've offered with the industry, by creating the, the cell phone app, it takes a photo real time, it recognizes that it is or is not counterfeit, and the moment it's made that decision, it will wrap it up 
It takes the date, the time, the location, the product, the quantities, who's involved in that, and sends it straight into Watson and straight into I2 and straight into the case manager for management. So for the, the manufacturers, again the brands, we're taking processes that are taking weeks and months down into seconds. The real value of that is they're looking for hot spots and trends. Because if you're analyzing data which is a month old and you're doing a takedown in Washington DC, the people who've sold the product and they've already moved off are now in Tennessee. So if we're doing this real time in Tennessee, it means that the investigative process is staying right on top of the, the, the changes and the trends of where counterfeit products and goods have been manufactured or sold. Our next demo wraps up everything that's happened in the scenario and creates a case. So an incident that will be investigated for a takedown or a counterfeit claim. The value of that for the, the brand, the manufacturer, and let's use the example of Nike, we've confirmed that the shoe is counterfeit, or if we use a, a Moximol product, so a pharmaceutical company, the value we've got here is everybody that has authority can add to the case. If you're the lawyers, you can be doing your legal processes of takedown. If you're product managers, you can do the pricing issues associated with the, the disruption to that product. If you're in distribution, you can see where that product was manufactured and you can add details. For example, a big issue in counterfeit is what you call gray markets, where products that are legitimate are moved to another country and sold it at a cheaper price. So for example, you could be making products in India, they should be sold in India, but they've turned up in America. That's a bigger issue, that's a bigger an issue as counterfeit because it disrupts the financial impacts to companies. So a product can enable the distribution agents, the legal agents, the financial agents, all to work together and update the systems on that case, brings it together, and then does the takedown. So Sam will show that now. Thank you, Michael. So within our case management platform, what we have the ability to do is capture all of the documentation and data and uh, investigation information within a central platform. So in the top left-hand corner, we've got case details, so an automatically generated reference number, and the index information that came through from the mobile app. So we've got location, uh, the case categorizations as well. As we start to investigate this further, we might want to load in different reference numbers, uh, locations as to where this has actually been captured, and we can then start to load in products and information around uh, the different seizures, the different takedowns that we've taken place as part of the investigation. In the middle, we get all of the business documents as well, and this is fully integrated into both email and also MS Office systems as well. So in this case, if I want to trigger off a sample submission letter, so I've already got the product, I'm now looking to send it to the lab to actually get investigated further, I can simply trigger off this uh, process, which will pull down information from the case itself. So it will pull down the reference number, if there's product codes, batch numbers, for example, and this will make it available within uh, my Microsoft Office uh, platform. So I can simply fill out some of the elements within this Word document. I can add in perhaps some instructions that are bespoke to this particular example. And at the top, we've fully integrated this platform, so I can simply save this back to our case management system. So once we hit save, what this does is automatically loads this document back into IBM Case Manager. And we can see now we've got a new document in the top left there. And what we're able to do is have full auditability, full audit control, so I can understand exactly who and when this sample submission was sent off. As the results come back, we're able to load this into the case, and we can then start to process this and move this forward uh, all the way through to resolution and hopefully getting these products off the marketplace. The key point here in case management is that for each different incident that's been identified, it needs to be wrapped up and controlled. So this process is about takedown, this process is about financial impact, this process is about legal integration to the courts. All this needs to be held. But you might have people in Hong Kong and in Sydney and in London and in Nashville all working on the same transaction. The case management system allows them to do that. For example, you may need to add the cost of the investigators and the lawyers to be involved in this. All that's put together so you know the total cost of budgets associated to the takedown 
in the dispute. So by the time we finish, we've got a legal chain of custody, the ability to have brought everything into a single view. And again, this is the value of IBM's product suite integrated with Integrity. Because we're able to drag and drop social media, communications, eBay, because we're able to drag telephone calls, uh, incoming images, emails, all into a case, it means they're able to wrap up a complete decision. Now, that allows and enables the, the, the lawyers, the police, the investigators, all to have a single view of the truth and start looking for trends because we can then start to suck the data out to put into the analytical tools associated to um, different things we're seeing. So the real value of knowledge capture is the analytics and reporting because you need to work out if there's, if there's $1.7 trillion of counterfeit goods created annually, and if you're a company such as Burberry that spends a million dollars a week trying to fight it, the issue that you've got is how can you start to analyze where the issues are, where they're coming from, what countries they're coming from, um, what type of trends, locations, dates, periods. We're able to analyze everything and then provide it to the police or provide it to um, law enforcement. The real issue for government is if you think about something like the tobacco industry, 30% of all smokes globally that are sold are counterfeit. So the issue with that is governments, specific to the HMRCs or the IRS, these kind of organizations, are explicitly interested to fight and help invest in the takedown of the counterfeit. So there's this heavy involvement within government for the improvement to tax payments. There's heavy involvement from the brands themselves, the manufacturers, on not losing product or selling unsafe products on the market. So our analytics engine enables us to start looking for those trends for a company to know where they should most affordably place their resources. Because until now, they've relied on gut instinct and they've just spread their risks across the world. Now they're able to start seeing real time what's going on. We're also working on programs with a range of different brands now, different organizations that have a similar industry, be it fashion, be it consumer industry, be it the media industry, where they can share information if they choose to. So you can look for records about James Ganaway, we know he's a heathen, and we, we start to see other records about him in other locations around the world. So that's the value, is the starting to get connection points where it's more affordable if they choose to share information. So we'll now do some demos to show the value. Okay, so back in the, uh, the case system, all of the information that we've been feeding into this uh, view is now available via analytics and dashboards. So one thing that Michael mentioned there was that a lot of the time values are associated to certain takedown processes, and a lot of the uh, people working in the teams that we're working with at the moment quite often have to justify their budget. So being able to understand what's exactly happening in your organization, how much your spend is versus how much your budget is, is, imper is imperative. Within this platform, though, we're also able to understand when things are happening in certain locations, certain ways in which we're actually seizing product, products. So it could be that we want to filter content down just by products that are being captured by the export process. And what this will enable me to do is basically drill into the content and provide me with a drillable view as to the actual content that I'm interested in. So just while this loads up, what we're able to do is, within this particular view, is see everything by categorization. So I can either say it's valued by personal hygiene farmer, for example, if I'm a, a multi, uh, an organization that has multiple departments, or we can do sub-categorizations and sub-values based on that particular um, uh, brand's categorizations and products. What we're also able to do is, if we look at a geographical breakdown, based on the information loaded in the case system, we're also able to understand exactly where seizures and cases are being identified. And as Michael alluded to earlier, this is very important if you've got certain resources in certain locations, but you don't seem to be seeing spikes in traffic. It might be that a country next door seems to be picking up a lot more cases or a lot more seizures are happening. What you can then start to do is reallocate that resource make the most amount of uh, the people that you've got uh, within your organization to make it as 
as uh, the takedown process as important as possible, and obviously try and take down as much as possible and prevent new issues from arising. Again, this can all be configured so that if you, at the moment we're looking at value and we're looking against money and where that is currently um, coming from, so we're seeing where the most amount of money has been uh, counterfeited. It could be that you're just interested in sheer volume, and again, behind the scenes, the analytics module can all be configured and customized. What we often do as well is work with our customers, work with the organizations to understand specifically what they want to see. And so long as we capture that information within the case view, within that initial capture process, then it can absolutely be analyzed and information can be provided back in a, in a geographical or a, a graphical view for the wider business. The key thing of the product is where you can do a, a detailed search across the whole historic summary of your product so you're able to look deep into the systems about trends and, and access. So for example, if we're going to look for a product name, name of person, location, telephone number, and all the historic searches by that, the real issue to the investigative company is having access to real data. So the value of integrity in IBM is we've created the scalable system that many corporations are integrated to the common platform called a data hub that enables them to share knowledge about common interests and areas. So we're now going to do a search and retrieval to show the simplicity of how documents can be connected and found in this kind of an investigation. So in our, in our data hub platform, what we're able to do is uh, run searches across different metadata information that you've got against your documents. So it could be a certain case up number, it could be a product name or batch number that you're looking for. But what we're also able to do is search for content within content. So if we have the name of an individual that we're specifically looking to find and understand exactly what's in our system relating to that person, we can run a, a search for them. And what this will do is look for all of the content that we've got, look for all of the metadata, look for all of the actual information, and find that information and bring that back into uh, a list of results. So this is doing full text search, full text analysis of all of the content within our data hub. And what we're also able to do is provide this search across a wider systems as well. So we can look at just a simple um, search within our own organization, but we can also then go out across the wider knowledge capture platform to pull back more and more information. It could be that this, this data within this hub provides us with a new line of investigation. It could provide us with an address, a telephone number, that we can then run other searches for against this data hub and find additional information and data. Behind the scenes as well, full content management capabilities, full check-in, check-out processes. So you're able to see as an organization and you're able to understand exactly who is doing what with what data. And again, this can be fully secured so that only the right people in the organization get access to that information as well. The real value here is we're doing a search against Amazon, eBay, Facebook, against structured databases that you've got historic legacy information, against the content repository. So we are able to look anywhere externally and internally and bring back a hit against the scanaway. So for example, the first document shows a um, Microsoft document associated to uh, his where you can identify his living address. You start to looking at different documents associated to Excel files you might have on site, PowerPoint documents, emails, and anything on that subject matter. The important part is then how you can link that in with the products like I2, in with the products such as Watson to break down the intent, the high priority activity, and then focus in on the information you can use in the courts or the takedown process. So we're in a position here, because we have a data hub, and it builds up every day greater details of what's going on in the counterfeit industry, the information source is becoming greater and more valued by the hour as each individual company and organization shares what we're looking for. But by having our bots, which are going out to the Amazons and the Ebays and the Alibabas, which is doing 80% of the counterfeit sales today, and by integrating that with the anything inside your business, being legacy, case management, images, social, etc., we are able to have a true total view and intelligence about 
a scenario. And this is a task that up to a year ago could take hundreds of man hours, which we're now doing in seconds. That's the real value to an organization. So the cost of takedown, the speed of takedown, the ability to use budgets more appropriately, proactively to target who are the bad boys and how to deal with those. So now we're going to show you how we've integrated I2 to do far more comprehensive intelligence investigations about how you can build on the, the, the organized crime network within the case because it's important that we can get right back to who created the product. So if someone's creating pills, what country have you paid created in? What city, what warehouse, what manufacturing plant, who's delivering them? And if you can cut the that distribution chain out, it stops it into the market in the first place. And that's where the value of I2 integrates to every police agency in the world and government agency, the ability to look into our hub has the greatest value to IBM and your consumers. So within I2, uh, what we have now is the ability to uh, capture marketplace data, as you saw from the very first demo. But we've now got this integrated so that we can actually visualize this content and identify key sellers, key individuals that we're actually interested in during an investigation. So in this particular view, what we have is a list of uh, listings that have come from Taobao. So in the middle, we've got the marketplace Taobao. This could be eBay, Amazon, could be all three, for example. Around the outside, we've then got a whole bunch of listings that have been identified as counterfeited, or at least at this stage, we're interested in investigating them further. What I've then done is applied some uh, conditional formatting to actually understand who the sellers are and what sellers are linked to the most amount of cases. So on the right hand side, we've got an individual here that's linked to nine plus cases that I'm now particularly interested in, as he seems to be selling the most amount of products related to the uh, information I'm currently investigating. As we go around and look at the different colors, we've got people in orange that are selling sort of six or seven different listings, all relating to that same search term. And from here, what we're able to do then is investigate further. So it could be that looking just at a spreadsheet, looking at that marketplace tool, we don't identify the fact that one individual seems to be key within this entire search query and within the, the, uh, these products being counterfeited. As Michael was saying, what we're, what we're keen to actually get to a position in is to be able to visualize and understand what the entire process looks like. So at the top, we may have emails and we may have content relating to um, specific uh, products or alerts from our case management system from the initial mobile application. And what we're able to do then is map out what's actually happened within this case. So it could be that we've identified certain goods within a store. We can plot that within I2. We can understand that particular location. And as we go through our investigation further, we understand who the manufacturers are, who the distribution companies are, who's actually been involved in that chain. And the, the end goal is to be able to identify where the products have actually been manufactured from. So the end goal here is to understand the warehouse that's actually been distributed, the warehouse that's been created from, and the key players in between are linking these products together. What you can then start to do is smack the head on the people actually creating these products and that will stop the actual manufacturing and counseling goods appearing in stores at a later date. So within I2, what we have now is the ability to capture not only structured content from traditional data sources, but we can combine this with unstructured sources as well. So retail sites such as eBay, Amazon, Alibaba, but also social media data as well, which I'll show you shortly, can all now be leveraged within the I2 platform. The idea of this is to, be able to uncover patterns and trends within the data that you might not necessarily see. So looking at large quantities of spreadsheets, looking at just general case information, you might not notice the patterns and trends connecting multiple cases together. Whereas when you can pull it in a visualization tool, you're actually able to understand the connection path and understand how people are working together and how cases are connected together. This is especially important when you consider the wider Knowledge Capture Data Hub when we're able to look at content from other organizations or brands. And from that, we can then expose even more content and even more networks than what we're previously used to. Especially where all of this data is usually handled manually, 
bringing automation and um, efficiency to this process is incredibly important. So the next demonstration that I'll go through is how we can also bring social media content into the IT platform and how this can help enhance investigations to understand connection points and understand how people are working together online. Within IQ itself, we have our own plugin that sits within the platform, so this is fully integrated within the system. And what I can do from here is run a search for not only content we've captured already, but I can also run searches for individuals. So say, for example, we have been given a name, a couple of names that we've been asked to investigate as analysts. I can run a search for them. So I'm going to run a search for Sam Clive and add him to the chart. So straight away from this tool, we're querying social media sites. And we can add this content to, as uh, entities to the actual chart itself. And what this then enables me to do is expand on information. So say we've been given the name Sam Clive and Dean Oxley, and we've been tasked to find out how these people are working together online, how they're connected online. By using our tool, what we're able to do is expand on things such as friends or followers. So by right-clicking on this entity and going down to friends, this will make the connection point back to the social site and find any connection points that I've recently made. What we're then able to do is basically do the same thing for the other individuals on our chart and build out this data automatically. So as this bloom of data builds out, what we can see is currently the second account we're interested in is not attached to any of the entities on the chart at the moment. However, if I run the same query, what this will do is automatically identify if certain entities are already on the chart. So while we're currently dealing with social media data, we have the capability to look at any of the content within the data hub. So this could be common email addresses, common telephone numbers, addresses, and with the power of I2 being able to link those entities automatically, it makes finding content and finding information a lot easier. What we can now see, now we've expanded on this, is actually there seems to be a common person linking these two individuals to the chart. From our search earlier around James Ganaway, what we're now able to see is he is actually a key individual in connecting these, these two people together. It could now mean that when we go back to our case system, we have three, four, five different cases that can all be linked together and can all be um, brought into one investigation. This is powerful technology that wasn't available previously. It would rely on it, analysts perhaps remembering that a certain or person or organization was a part of a different case and then sifting through all of that content manually. So it could be a telephone number could be a bank account detail, it could be a Facebook handle. You know, there's no way that an individual could remember the billions of different transactions. And that's where I too, integrated with Watson, integrated with Case Manager, seamlessly in a counterfeit app, is enabling brands, the manufacturers, to take the fights to the market. Actionable intelligence that helps them to understand where organized crime's coming from. By looking at billions of transactions in a minute, highlighting the points of connection, is that's the value in taking the fight to organized crime. So do you think that will conclude from the point of view of our demonstrations. We want to show you how you're paid now. The important thing here is if you have a strong relationship with any manufacturer, with Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Nike, um, Abercrombie, if it be Glaxo, if it be um, any organization that's a manufacturer of products and you give us the ability to communicate with them, we'll show them the product. If they were to buy it from us, this is how you're paid. So firstly, we'll use either IBM fixed term part numbers, which are the cloud part numbers, part numbers that you're recognized with today. We also recognize with an integrity or two password advantage part numbers. So from our point of view, if you're a sales exec, that gets paid on everything, you'll be made whole on case management and Watson and I2, or if you're in an individual department, you'll be paid on the parts that you own. So if you take a 20 user system here, it's in very, very handsome lines per customer. So what we've done with the market is say, just log on, use it, try it, buy it. So for you, there's a zero cost option to say to a manufacturer, have a look at this. If, you, if you're trying to fight counterfeit, this is how we can help you. Very small cost 
to them because we just charge 150 per user a month. But the value of that is it drags this IBM software sale for you each time. Now, your real targets manufacturers. So if you're making pills, if you're making toys, if you're making powders, if you're making shoes, any organization that's in the manufacturing industry has this issue today and they're trying to resolve it. The higher in the brand, the higher value they're going to see what you're doing. These organizations, the brands, are spending millions of dollars annually, in the most cases a week, hiring investigative firms, government agencies and others to try to identify and take down illegal creation and sales of products. But they're also affected within retail because once they get to the store, the retail companies and the e-retail companies like the Amazons and Ebays now have a duty of care and a legal responsibility to make sure they are not receiving or selling counterfeit products. So government, from the point of view of if you're in customs, for example, have relations with, with customs, they will love this product. If you're in HMRC, they will love this product. If you're in any, if you're in any investigative organisation um, that's organised crime, such as um, children trafficking, if it be drug trafficking, if it be weapon trafficking, that's funded from anti-counterfeit products being sold. So again, the government has interest. If you're in the entertainment industry, be it Disney and the sale of a Superman toy, or if you're uh, if you're in the entertainment industry and you've got a 50 cent CD that's been manufactured and sold illegally, they have strong interest. Or if you're in the insurance industry looking for counterfeit products, again, the ability about cross sales of you know, the, the insurance risks. But this is who you need to ask for. The sales are made through the senior legal counsel. Do not talk to IT, it's a complete waste of your time. Do not talk to security, it's a waste of your time. Every organization has what's called a senior legal counsel, and within senior legal counsel, they have the budget, which is brand protection and fraud investigators. So if you can go to Nike, to the senior legal counsel, or EMI, if you can go to Glaxo, explicitly ask who the senior legal counsel is and make them aware of that. It gives you another good reason to talk across your customers, because typically you might be talking in different areas that are not this. So within our company, Integrity, talk to Sam Clive if you're with an IBM, and he'll support you from the point of view how we assist, or Courtney James from the channel management. So Courtney James will drive the day-to-day -day sales process with you. She's on this call and is available to help you. The key thing here is, if you identify a customer, we have a customer facing video that we can also share with you. Let's simply share the video, let them see it, the customers, they'll like it, they'll contact you, then Courtney will assist you with demonstrations, with trials, with proposals, uh, assist you through the whole process of onboarding, and of course, buying IBM software behind that. 